My name is Chris Wells. I'm a senior director of product marketing here at Red Hat, working inside the Red Hat Enterprise Linux business unit. And I'm joined today by Gunnar Hellickson. Gunnar, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Gunnar Hellickson. I'm the vice president and general manager for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And we are very excited today to really share with you where we're going with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We're going to tag team on the presentation here today. I'll start things off uh, with some uh, grounding topics and then hand it over to uh, Gunnar for the big reveal of what we're doing with Red Hat Enterprise Linux moving forward. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, particularly for those of you who may not be familiar with our offering. When we take a look at Red Hat Enterprise Linux, this is really the mission statement that we focus here on at Red Hat of what we wanna be able to deliver our customers. As much as I love operating systems, and I know Gunnar, you love operating systems as well. We all love Linux. And I want everyone to focus on Linux. We realize for you, our customers and users of the product, you're really focused on your workloads. You really care about the applications that you need to deliver, the services and businesses you need to deliver back to your organization. And so in that first column on the left-hand side, you're really focused on the workloads. That means we're focused on the workloads. We want to bring the innovation of Linux to you, but ultimately it's all in service of being able to run those workloads. At the same time, you care about your applications that you're running on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You also care about where you can run all those different applications. And so when we take a look at Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we wanna make sure that it can run everywhere and be everywhere that you wanna be, whether it's in the traditional data center, happens to be out on the public cloud, or even all the way out at the edge, we wanna be able to provide it everywhere for you. And then finally, a big part of our job here around Red Hat Enterprise Linux is really bringing together the community, not just from an open source perspective, but also bringing together the entire portfolio of both Red Hat and our extended ecosystem. All of the hardware partners, all of the software partners, because at the end of the day, we want to make you successful so you can take those workloads on those applications and be able to run them wherever you want which means we've got to bring people together, bring companies and organizations together into that ecosystem to make it successful. So if we take a look at where Red Hat Enterprise Linux is today, we'd like to say RHEL is that piece there in the middle that really ties together the applications that you care about, your databases, application servers, web servers, whatever the workloads are you're running on top with all of the different types of places to run it below. All the different things from in the traditional data center with bare metal, different hypervisors, different cloud providers out on the public cloud, private cloud, even all the way out to the edge. You've got to go across all those things. So Red Hat Enterprise Linux has always been focused on being able to tie those things together. The other product that we bring to it is we realize you don't just run one Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. Chances are you're running multiple ones inside your environment. And so that need, means that you need to be focused on how do you manage that entire estate of systems. How can, can you configure provision systems, update, patch, all those types of things. And we have a variety of management tools that you can use from Red Hat Insights, which is our online service, which we'll talk a little bit more about later in this presentation, to Red Hat Satellite to manage the life cycle of all your systems. All of these things have to work together in concert for you to be successful. And that's what we have always provided with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux system platform and ecosystem. Now, as part of this, when you buy that, you don't just buy a license. You don't just buy access to bits. What you are purchasing is actually the subscription. And when you buy your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription, it's more than just the bits. The bits are important because you've got to have that to make the system run, but it includes all of these other items. It includes everything that you care about to make sure that you can secure your system. It includes that partner ecosystem that I talked about, the access to thousands of ISVs and hardware vendors to put your systems together to run the applications. You care about the life cycle. In fact, a lot of customers we talk to, they wanna be able to build a system, whether it's on-premise or it's in the cloud, they wanna lay it down, they wanna put an application on there and they kinda of wanna set it and forget it. They don't wanna to have to worry about it. And one of the ways that we enable that is providing a life cycle. There's a 10 year life cycle that comes with Red Hat Enterprise Linux so you can uh, put your systems into place. And also when we release new operating systems, we put new versions of Red Hat Enterprise Linux out into the market every three years so you can capture that latest innovation, that latest set of tools. But we also put out minor updates every six months to make sure that you always have the latest and greatest that you need to run inside your environment and that you can have all of the performance and availability that you need. And finally, we make sure that we're your partner in all of this because we provide you not only with support and expertise from people that can help you support your systems, 
but also we provide that with additional services. And we'll talk a lot about those services together in terms of the proactive analytics that we provide around Red Hat Insights and what are some of the things that we are doing in Insights to expand out that set of capabilities. Gunnar will touch on that in just a few minutes. Now, the reason you guys are here is hopefully you know the story about Red Hat Enterprise Linux today. You really wanna know where we're going tomorrow. And what we're really expanding out tomorrow is across the top of this diagram, because one of the things that we definitely see when we talk to analysts, when we talk to customers in the marketplace, Linux adoption continues to accelerate. All of the new applications, everything from all the AIML stuff that's going on in the marketplace to traditional types of applications, they're landing on top of they're landing on top of Linux, which means there's a greater uh, demand for it. And one of the things that we constantly hear from our customers is that they need more people, they need more help, they need more advice and skills to be able to do that. They need to be able to do things such as managing not just single systems, but whole fleets of systems. How can we provide management capabilities to do that? A lot of concerns around security. How can they make sure that they can take advantage of the innovation that comes from open source, but at the same time know that it comes from a trusted source. They're not gonna have to worry about it being compromised. Also, how do they know that the projects that they're investing in or they wanna use inside uh, their data center, how do they know those open source projects have the right kind of backing behind them? They're gonna be there tomorrow when they now become a mission critical piece inside their infrastructure. Those are the types of things that we are investing in. Gunnar will talk in more detail about some of these types of tools, but the general theme here is that we're adding more and more management capabilities into the Red Hat Enterprise Linux platform to help you really manage at scale. We'll take a look at things like system roles, for example. If you're not familiar with system roles, what system roles allow you to do is take very common routine tasks that you do when you're administering the operating system, and we take something that would normally say take 10 or 15 steps, we can put that into a system role and give that automation capability to you so you only have to execute one command. This obviously makes things a lot faster and a lot more predictable and a lot more consistent, but it also allows you to take people that maybe don't have uh, the depth of Linux knowledge that some other people in your organization do, and it allows you to let them administer the systems, but kind of give them some training reels, some guardrails of what they can do, but obviously be more efficient and contribute to the organization. So what you're going to see is a lot of our focus is saying, look, Linux is here. It is what everyone is doing, the innovation and automation on top of. How can we make it not only easier to consume, easier to manage inside of your environment? Because when we look at the world, I think about, you know, I'm a, an old man here. Used to have hair when I started this job. And when I started this job, we did everything on DVDs. Can you remember the last time you received an operating system or any application for that matter that came on a CD or DVD? It's been a while. But a lot of what we've done in how we approach and think about things is kind of in a traditional kind of almost like DVD mindset we realize the world's really moved to a cloud first type of mindset. People think not in terms of building from a disk, they think in terms of building from an image that's out in the cloud. How can we more easily do that and really do it in a more cloud native type of way? That is the type of stuff that Gunnar's gonna talk to you about because that's really where the future is, where we're going with RHEL, kind of moving from the traditional stuff, which we'll continue to do, continue to support because we realize you have systems that do that but also do them in new and innovative ways that make it easier to automate and manage inside your environment. So, a little drum roll here, please. I'm happy to pass the baton over to Gunnar, where he's gonna talk about some of the new capabilities that we've got uh, coming out inside of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Yeah, thanks, Chris. That was a, that was a great setup. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, the first thing that we've, that we've just announced is, uh, as Chris mentioned earlier, this expansion of management services that are available to all Red Hat Enterprise Linux customers. And just to reiterate, the, the reason why we're doing this is because we're recognizing that uh, the users of Red Hat Enterprise Linux are no longer managing systems on kind of a one-by-one -one basis. You're often managing dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of systems at a time. And it's incumbent on us to help you make that modern Linux experience as easy as possible. Management isn't an optional thing that you buy later. Um, it is something that has to be kind of, it's integral to your experience of, of Linux. And so what we've done is uh, 
we're doing everything we can to simplify that end-to-end -end systems management to make sure, as Chris mentioned earlier, that the precious Linux talent that you have in your organization today can work as effectively as possible. So to that end, that management tooling, we know that most folks would prefer not to install a separate management tool. They could, of course, we have the Red Hat Satellite uh, Management System, which is extremely full featured and is a physical server that you can install on premise. And that is a wonderful product. And there are uh, lots of people have needs that are complex enough to demand that, but there are a lot more people who don't need a specialized management tool. They just need management tools available. So we're making these management tools available as a service. So there is no infrastructure overhead uh, to installing it. Um, these management tools through these web pages uh, provide interactive guidance to help guide you through the management process. And all of this is just included in the subscription. This isn't something you buy later. Uh, this is now integral. This is part of the subscription value that Chris mentioned earlier. So specifically, what do I mean by those management tools? Well, let's go to the next slide. And you can see, um, you can think about it in two ways. Uh, first is a set of diagnostic tools and folks who have been carefully paying attention to Red Hat Enterprise Linux for the last several years will know that we have had insights uh, that service included in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. Insights is there to take the expertise that Red Hat has internally and express it to you through tools. The idea here is that you shouldn't have to wait to or call support to find out if you have a problem or if you've made a mistake or there's been a misconfiguration. Uh, Red Hat through the insight system can actually tell you if you have something misconfigured or if you have a security problem or if you have systems that are unpatched. Um, so you can think about that as kind of the diagnostic side of the management tooling. And what we've added in addition to this diagnostic uh, insights system, we've also added uh, the ability to fix the things that we have identified. Um, so if you find that you have uh, only some of your systems are, have a particular patch, but the other systems need it, you can through the, through the management tools, uh, go fix those systems. Click a few buttons and the systems will, will patch themselves. Um, you can even group systems together and say, these are my critical systems, these are my test systems, these are my development systems and distinguish by group and you can patch them differently by group. You can treat them differently. Um, again, these are basic management basic management tasks. And we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to approach these basic, uh, these basic management tasks. We've also made some improvements to the image builder system which allow you, uh, have always allowed you to create kind of golden images or golden blueprints that allow you to take the same configuration and deploy it to any of the public clouds on premise into a VMware installation. Um, we're adding the ability to include custom software into those gold images because we know that when folks are building their golden standard, they're very rarely only using the software available in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. You're using third-party repositories, you're using your own internal repositories. So we're making that available to you uh, as well. So if we go to the next slide, you can get a look at what we're talking about here. Uh, this screenshot uh, is showing you the CIS benchmark. This is a security benchmark that a lot of customers use as their kind of basic hardening standard. And it turns out that the management tools that I'm talking about actually know what the CIS benchmarks are. And if you say these systems here in my production group, uh, these need to be these need to be these need to meet the CIS benchmark. Well, here's an interface. We can actually show you which ones are meeting that standard, which ones aren't, and which ones need uh, need remediation. Um, again, this used to be something that uh, was extra or something that you needed uh, to buy separate tools for. We consider it now a core part of the experience of managing Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So now that we've done this. Uh, you might have, you might be kind of excited about this. You might be, well, hey, this sounds handy. I want to be able to manage the CIS benchmarks in my in my estate, and uh, I would love to have these these patching and, and diagnostic tools available to me. But I'm running CentOS today, Gunnar. What what can you do for me? If we go to the next slide. I can show you what we can do for you. You may or may not know that in June 30th of 2024, with the end of life of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, CentOS Linux 7 will stop. There will be no further updates to CentOS Linux 7. Um, lots of customers have already started their migration plans. If you have not started your migration plan, I strongly encourage you to do so today. Take a look at all the options you have available. Uh, and one of those options is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, and so if you elect to go to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you will of course get access to all of the delicious management tools that I just talked about. Um, but you will also get access to our ELS offering. That's the extended lifecycle support offering. And what that will do is add another four years of life to your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. 
Um, and so, and we make this available so that, because we know that not all customers can move as quickly as they want to, especially with the advent of uh, the, the way the economy is going, uh, especially with COVID, which slowed everybody down. Your, your migration plans, your upgrade plans are probably not exactly as on schedule as you would like them to be. And so with this ELS offering, you can buy yourself another two years and allows you to safely stay on on, uh, on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, give you time to upgrade to a Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, 8 or a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. Uh, so you do, in other words, if you are on CentOS Linux today, um, you do have options. We can add time, we can buy you time on your on your current configuration, and we can make available these management tools uh, that should make these migrations a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and let's start talking about what what is the master plan here? Okay, and you've just given me all these all these management tools. Uh, wh where what is the long term game here? Where, like where is Red Hat Enterprise Linux going? Um, and it's a great question. It's a it's a it's a question that, that Chris and I talk about uh, every day. So step one is you're soaking in it. Step one is making sure that management tools are available to every Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscriber. As I said before, we now consider management not to be an optional part of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux experience. Management is now core to the Red Hat Enterprise Linux experience. And again, as Chris mentioned earlier, this speaks to the popularity of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and the popularity of Linux. Uh, now folks are not running you know, just Linux on one particular database or Linux for one web server farm. Their entire estate is running Linux. And so a part of Linux is running lots of Linux, which means you need management tools. All right. So with those management tools under our belt, what is step two? Go right here. So step two is, as I said before, we're now running lots of systems. And what many customers have done when they're running lots of systems is they've realized that I can't, if I'm running thousands of systems or hundreds of systems, it's extremely difficult to kind of hand curate each one. And so a lot of them have automated their configuration systems. They have automated their deployment. Uh, they may even have their Red Hat Enterprise Linux deployments conducted through a continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. Um, and what that means is that the, admit, the task of administering a Red Hat Enterprise Linux system is moving from runtime, where I want to take a look at a running system and I want to look at the diagnostics and I want to see if it's performing correctly and all that stuff. All that stuff is still important, but if I want to make any changes, I may not be making it directly on that running system. What I'm going to do is go back to my build side. I'm going to go back to the build system and say, go make me a new Red Hat Enterprise Linux server and tweak this setting, add this software, change this thing, and I'm gonna hit a button and then I'm gonna deploy a thousand of them. That means that the Red Hat Enterprise Linux experience, the management experience of this is transitioning from a runtime experience and becoming more of a build time experience. And our first attempt at, at, at making this experience easier is the image builder tool. Now through the image builder tool, we should be able to make that build time experience much easier for you. So in addition to the runtime management, we're adding build time management capabilities. All right. So that leads us to step three. Now with step three, if I have, uh, if I have my systems now being managed at build time, uh, that is, uh, I can now create blueprints and say, okay, uh, this deployment looks like these three systems that look like this and they get sent over here and these systems over here, these get sent over here. Um, this makes it now easier for me to accomplish one of the core tasks of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is creating a consistent operational and a consistent technical infrastructure for your application. And uh, that allows us to actually create more choices for you. Um, today, it is uh, it is somewhat difficult to simultaneously manage uh, a fleet that is running on x86 and on ARM platform and on power platforms. Um, AIML and uh, the cloud providers have popularized the use of accelerators like GPUs. Um, and so there's lots of different kinds of infrastructure which require lots of different things from the operating system. And Today, the operating system, we have for 20 years, we have tried to solve all the hardware problems with one version of the operating system, right? Um, and what we're finding is that it is increasingly difficult to solve the entire problem with one operating system. And what that, and what we're beginning to realize is we now need to create perhaps special optimizations for Red Hat Enterprise Linux for different kinds of hardware. Now that sounds nice, right? That sounds handy. That sounds like something we should have done a long time ago, but there's a trick. Because if you go and optimize RHEL for 
this platform and this platform and this platform. Now suddenly you have two, three, four, five different Red Hat Enterprise Linuxes that you have to manage. And now you're, we've expanded your support matrix and made it a lot more complex to maintain consistency across your deployment. However, if in step two, we have solved your build time problem, created one common blueprint and allowed that blueprint to express through different deployment artifacts, it becomes easier for you to manage that complexity because you can manage that complexity at build time rather than at runtime. So now with these tools like Image Builder and the ability to deploy images across several hybrid cloud infrastructures, in Image Builder, you can say, I want this image, but I want it optimized for this GPU. I have this image and I want it optimized for this public cloud platform. So in this way, we're trying to balance the ability to optimize for different platforms while maintaining the consistency that you want. Now, if we combine all this together, that leads us to step four in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux future, which is expanding your secure supply chain. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. We have 13,000 packages that comprise Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Only two or 300 of those packages have to do with the operating system itself. The rest of the packages are there because you, our customers, have asked us to ship them. They said, hey, listen, Chris, can you please include this web server in Red Hat Enterprise Linux? Because if you include this web server in Red Hat Enterprise Linux and support it and provide security fixes for it and fix my bugs, then it's going to be safe for me to deploy inside my enterprise. And uh, a good way of understanding Red Hat Enterprise Linux is, yes, the lifecycle and all the support value that and the subscription value that, uh, that Chris mentioned earlier. But at bottom, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a trusted source of software. And that's why we ship those other 12,800 packages <laughs> in addition to the core 200 that comprise the operating system. 13,000 is not enough. We believe we can expand the amount of software that we provide to you especially with these curation and management tools that we're providing. That now makes it safe for us to drastically improve, improve and increase the amount of software that we include inside the Red Hat Enterprise Linux offering, um, which means that you can now use, continue to use Red Hat Enterprise Linux as your source for trusted software. So as we've gone through this journey of expanding into management tools, moving uh, management from runtime and adding a build time management component. Now we've helped you manage the complexity of your infrastructure and also allowed you to manage the breadth and the catalog of software that you want to include in your solutions on top, um, all out of the same tool and all provided as part of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. And in this way, um, hopefully create another 20 years of success uh, for, uh, for you and for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Chris, you wanna bring us home? I sure will. And Gunn, that was some really exciting stuff that you talked about, you know, the change in our philosophy of really focusing not on the single system, but managing all the systems. I'm curious, how, uh, how much of that stuff is available today in Insights? And what does it cost a customer to uh, acquire that capability? Chris, I'm delighted that you asked. Uh, so Insights available as part of a Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription, and it's included. There's no extra charge for it. The management tools that I just discussed that allow you to patch systems, identify bugs, problems, fix them, et cetera, deploy them to multiple clouds, that is all available today. Uh, the, uh, the image builder system, which allows you to compose an image, create blueprints, deploy, that's all included as part of this today. Um, and you will see us addressing the complexity of additional hardware platforms. Uh, you'll see us addressing that soon, and you will see us expanding the, the supply chain. That will, come, that will come later. So we're at kind of step one in the plan. You'll see us expanding into step two, three, and four over the next uh, two or three years. That is awesome to hear. So again, would encourage all of our you know customers out there today take advantage of that first step here. You know, take advantage of insights. It is part of your uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. If you haven't already activated it, please go in and do that. Also, take advantage of Image Builder, and then you'll see how that builds on the other things that Gunnar talked about in steps two, three, and four. If you're looking to find out more information about how to use those, we actually do host several different shows, uh, technical oriented about how to use new capabilities, such as Gunnar talked about here, both through RHEL Presents uh, every other Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and also into the terminal every Friday at 12 p.m. We have technical marketing managers from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux team that go through and talk about some of these different capabilities uh, that Gunnar just mentioned. In addition, if you want to get a little bit more hands-on, we also, we also would point you to lab.redhat.com. If you go to lab.redhat.com, we actually have hands-on labs that you can consume at your own pace, on your own time, 
jump out to the command line, jump out and see how Insights uses. Go ahead and take advantage of these and we'll talk about some of the different skills you can build up to increase not only your Red Hat Enterprise Linux knowledge, but also see how you can uh, apply some of these new capabilities that Gunnar just mentioned uh, inside of your environment. Try it inside that lab and get a hands on. I know a lot of people with insights are a little bit nervous. They're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can attach this system to, to an external service. I'm a little nervous about that. Well, here's a nice controlled environment. Go try it out. See the capabilities. Take advantage of it for yourself and use it in your environment. And then here's the other ways that you can connect with us on our various types of social channels. So thank you very much for enjoying uh, joining us for our presentation. Gunnar, thank you very much for uh, presenting as well. I hope everybody else has a great and wonderful day.